In the previous video I presented you a first rover for my mail to code system which came out of the 3D printer. I would now like to show you that such a vehicle can also be produced with much simpler tools. The mechanic of Rover R21 is mostly made of cardboard. Even if R20's tracks may look cooler, it doesn't offer any added value in terms of learning effect compared to R21's cardboard discs. The dimensions are similar and both robot platforms offer a variety of options for attaching extensions to the chassis. The essential electronic components are the same for both vehicles and consist of a Raspberry Pi, two RC hobby servos for continuous rotation, a power bank and a microcontroller. Basic material of R21 is 2mm cardboard which can be cut very easily with a sharp knife or scissors and all parts can afterwards be assembled with glue. Up to 3mm plywood or 2mm plastic could also be used, both materials can also be cut with a knife, also not quite as easily. The construction drawings can either be transferred to the cardboard using a ruler and a pen or simply glued on. Hot glue or super glue are suitable adhesives if you need something quick, wood glue is for people with a little more time. For the chassis, the cutout parts form a box after gluing. The two servos for continuous rotation which serve as drive motors are screwed to this. The screw holes must be pre-drilled with a 1.5mm drill or, as shown here, with a very small screwdriver. Each wheel is composed of two cardboard discs with a diameter of 45mm, which are glued to the servo horns. For better traction I glued two more discs on each wheel after the first tests and fitted tires made of rubber rings. A skid plate is glued to the bottom rear of the chassis. Attachment points for the Raspberry Pi and the microcontroller are made of a stack of cardboard pieces into which holes are drilled. The Raspberry Pi is attached to the front of the chassis. The microcontroller at the back, here I installed a cheaper nano board with an 80 mega 328 microcontroller. An 80 mega 2560 board like with R20 can of course also be used, however to my mind, the smaller and cheaper board is the better option for a cardboard robot. For the electronics, which in the simplest version consists of pin headers for the servos and a few resistors, I used a prototyping board that still has room for extensions. The power bank for the energy supply is inserted into the chassis from the rear. Now install the software on the Raspberry Pi. And connect the power supply via USB cables. From the power bank, one output leads to the Raspberry Pi and the second to the servos. 
Raspberry Pi and microcontroller board are also connected via an USB cable. The robot is now ready for use and can be fed with lines of code via the deliberately simple web interface. Yes, programming means writing text, even if Hollywood and various toy operating system manufacturers would like you to believe otherwise. In addition to the web interface for programming the robot, a tutorial is also integrated into the system. You can use the code examples listed there as a basis for your own experiments and adapt the source code to teach the robot new tricks. As with the 3D printed Rover R20, there is room for expansion. As the first upgrade I give the robot bumpers with switches that can be used to detect whether the Rover has hit an obstacle. On the back side of the cardboard bumpers is a wire connected to ground. At the corners of the chassis are the wire counterparts that lead to GPIO pins of the microcontroller. These simple switches are closed as soon as the rover hits an obstacle. If the robot is fed with the appropriate code, the drive motors will stop as soon as an obstacle is touched. Further code lines ensure that the rover drives back a bit, turns to the left, and thus drives around the obstacle. The underlying code is yet no rocket science, but it is a little tricky to implement. The retreat must not be too short and the turns must be correct. And yes, I should adjust the uneven speed of the two servos via software. I also implemented the bumpers with contact sensors in the design of Rover R20. As already mentioned, both robots have the same capabilities, which one you choose to replicate is up to you. Of course, the obstacle can also be wider so that the maneuver has to be performed more than just once. Even supposedly simple code examples have their own pitfalls and optimization is always possible. Be assured, it quickly comes to your mind that there must be gremlins in your rover making, together with bugs, life difficult for you as a programmer. A certain perseverance is a basic requirement when writing software. If that doesn't scare you, you can find the instructions for building your own copy of R21 on homofazians.de. And if you want to support me in giving these learning robots additional skills, there is also a donate button on my pages. In addition to the construction of the robots, the documentation and writing on the tutorials eats a lot of my time. The equivalent of a bar of chocolate or a bag of gummy bears as soul food helps to push the project forward. Many thanks to all the great people who have already supported me and my projects by a donation. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.